pausing in this very grounding pose. It's a, it's a sense of kind of arriving back into yourself. And as long as it's not painful, if, if it is, you know what to do. You can prop yourself up on some blocks or put the blanket under your feet. We'll just take a few slow, deep breaths, gently gathering yourself back to yourself. Very nice. And I'd like to invite you to just rest your fingertips on the ground, if you can, depending on how long your arms are, I suppose, and get a sense of the ground beneath you. That's lovely. I'm going to turn the palms up and on the inhale, bring the arms overhead, palms together, and exhale, hands come home to the heart. Take a deep breath. And releasing the hands to the ground. Good. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling, gathering up that earth energy. Bring it up overhead and exhale it down to the heart. Take a breath. And releasing the hands. Just get the sense of like, almost like you're digging into the ground, drawing it to that sense of the ground and bringing it overhead and exhaling it home to the heart center. Take a breath. And then we'll bring both hands round to the left. And if you can touch the ground behind you and the left leg, great. And on the in-breath, we'll reach up and please strengthen the arms. Good. Exhale, take the arms round to the right. Inhale, bring the arms overhead. Do you remember our beach ball? So firm the arms and exhale to the left. Good. Inhale, bring the arms overhead. Squeezing an imaginary ball to, to with both hands. Exhale here. Couple more rounds, all right? So inhale up, firm. Exhale down. Last time. Inhale up, for exhale down. Lovely. We'll come to hands and knees, please. So coming to all fours, getting your body in a, a bit of a square shape. Circle the shoulders, fan out the fingers, so nice and comfortable. And on the in-breath, we lift the chin and the chest and the tailbone. And on the exhale, we'll bow and tuck the tail between the legs. Good. Just taking your time. Letting that flow. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. Tucking the tail between the legs. One more time. Exhale, bow. And really arching the spine, pinning the belly button to the spine. We'll tuck the toes under and shift your bottom back towards your heels to stretch out the soles of the feet. And maybe you can walk the fingertips a little bit further forward. That's nice. And then we'll come back up to an inhale, making a dip in the spine. And this time, let's exhale, pull the hips back and up for a downward facing dog. Just relax your head. Broaden the shoulders, firm the lower arms together. Getting in a good place. Very nice. So this becomes tiring for you. You don't have to hold it, of course. But if you're happy here, please bend one knee and stretch off the opposite leg. Changing legs. That's good. Keeping it going. And then walk the feet to the hands, forward bend. Inhale, halfway up. And exhaling, bow. Let's do that again. Inhale, extend the spine forward, long neck. Exhale, bow. One more time. Root the feet, soften the knees, move the tailbone back, extend the head forward. And bow, and then rooting the feet, bend the knees. Let's gather up from the ground to the sky. 
and exhale the hands to the heart. Fantastic. Standing tall, take a breath. Mountain pose. And strengthen the legs and the arms a little in your mountain pose. Good. On the inhale, bring the arms overhead in a big swoop, touch the palms, and then pushing the air away, you'll bow down and fold. And if you're able to touch the ground and then gather up in a big wide swoop, palms facing up to the sky, exhale, we'll bring it back to the heart. Take a breath. Mountain pose. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bow. Inhale, extend horizontally. Exhale, fold. And then gathering up from the earth to the sky. Hands home to the heart. Big breath in. Mountain pose. One more time. Inhale, rise. Nose breathing as you exhale, fall. Inhale, lengthen the sides of the waist. Exhale, bow. And this time we'll step the left leg back. So coming into a high lunge, if you would. So you've got the right foot forward, left leg back. That's good. So see if we can bring that back heel a bit higher just to wake up the soles of the feet. Getting in a good place. And then springing the back foot to the front, second side. Lifting the right leg high, front knee over the heel. Good. Let's transition this to a high plank. So if you're in the mood for a plank today, join me with the shoulders over the wrists, double check those elbow creases, and we're gonna firm the thighs away from the ground, push the heels in one direction and the top of the head in the other. Oh yes, and then knees down, elbows close. Please lower onto your tummy, point the toes, curl up, cobra and flowing through all fours, downward facing dog. Long, slow breaths. Lifting the hips up and back. I'm gonna suggest we bend the knees a little bit and see if you can tilt your tailbone a bit higher. Really lifting the hips up. How about broadening across the shoulders, hugging the forearms? Taking some slow, deep breaths. And then we'll walk the feet to the hands, forward bend. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bow. Inhale, gather up from the earth to the sky. Exhale, bring it home to the heart. And we'll take a deep breath. Come to mountain and make your mountain pose, your Tadasana, very strong. So we're gonna firm the thighs, drop the tailbone down. So you feel a sort of muscle action in the whole body, including the arms and the fingers. And then inhale, swoop up. Exhaling folds, please. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhaling bow and stepping the left leg back. This time I'm going to invite you to a balancing high lunge. So if this is good for you, come on up. It's the same legs, but we're balancing. If it's going well, bring the arms overhead, rolling the shoulders down. Firm the arms above the head, looking up through the hands. Reach up through the fingertips, take a breath. And place the hands either side of the front foot. Good, let's change legs. So back foot to the front, big lunge. We're coming up. Drop the shoulders down and keep them down away from the ears as you bring up the arms. Strengthen. Looking up through the hands if it's going well for you. That's nice. Take a breath and step back to a high plank. Firming the thighs, top of the head in one direction, heels in the other. 
and then coming down halfway. So you might need to bring the knees down, but can you bend the elbows and get the upper arms more horizontal? Ooh, and then to the ground. Good, point the toes. The little back bend, curling up, tuck the toes, flow through downward facing dog. This is our, what we call our vinyasa. It's, it's the flow in the hasa flow that we're doing. So just enjoy a few deep breaths. Find the pause in the down dog. And then when you're ready, we're gonna bend both knees, look towards the top of the mat. And you might wanna do a little bunny hop or, or walk. So hop, hop or walk to the top, inhale, extend. Exhale, bow. Inhale, bring the arms overhead. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Take a breath. Mountain pose. Good, so we're coming to chair. So with the feet a few inches apart, drop the knees over the toenails. And you're going to scoot your bottom back as if you're sitting down in the imaginary chair. And then swing the arms alongside the ears. Roll them down, firming the arms. So look up through the hands. That's good. And can you take your tailbone back and down a smidgen? Good. Keep breathing. Utkatasana, chair pose. Maybe your ujjayi breath would match this pose perfectly if you had that capacity. And on the next in-breath, we'll rise up and bring the hands to the heart. And you might find that your heart started to beat a little faster. Good. Take a breath. Mountain pose. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bow. Inhale, extend. And fold, and we're going to step the left leg back, turning the toes diagonally out to the side, bringing the heel down, ready for our warrior. So make sure the heels are kind of either on the side of a stripe on your mat, both heels grounding down. We're going to come up and square the hips to the front. Relax the toes, hips are heavy. Sweep up the arms, roll the shoulders down. You'll look up through the hands. That's nice. Warrior one. Really grounding down through the back heel. That's good. Take a breath and we'll transition to a high plank. So going through our flow, however it suits you. So you can have the knees down or not. Come halfway down. Come all the way down, point the toes, lengthen through the legs, curl up cobra, or maybe up dog. And then we'll all meet in the downward facing dog. That's great. Drink in some deep breaths. Imagine your, your hips are being pulled up and back. And then your choice, step or jump to the top. Extend the spine and fold. And we're coming back to chair pose. So getting those thigh bones parallel with the earth, swing the arms alongside the ear, rolling the shoulders down, keeping those fingertips part of the pose. Ujjayi or nose breathing, and inhale, straighten, exhale, hands to the heart. Take a breath, mountain. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bow. Inhale, extend and fold. And stepping the right leg back, bring the right heel to the ground. So you can see where, where I am at with this one. Warrior one. So we kind of square the hips to the front, tap the left hip back, square the right hip forward, relax the toes, sweep up the arms and pull the shoulders down. That's lovely, keeping the breath flowing. Long, slow breaths. Very nice. And then a big breath in, and we'll exhale back to plank, please. So plank, getting there, however you want to get there, is fine. Zipping up into plank, coming halfway down, and lowering down, come up to cobra or up to and then tucking the toes, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Lengthening the sides of the waist diagonally back. 
We'll take some deep breaths. Very nice. And let's bring the knees to the ground. Allow the toes to just touch each other. And see how it feels to gently lower your bottom down onto your heels or somewhere near that suits you. We're going to walk the hands away. Come up onto fingertips and bow the head between the upper arms. Good. Just taking a moment here and then we'll come back to hands and knees, please. Inhale, curling up, looking up. Tuck the toes. Exhale, lift the hips up and back. Returning to downward dog. And then taking a two or three deep breaths here. We'll bend the knees. Step or jump to the top, extend the spine, and bow. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bring it home to the heart. And then when you're ready, please step the feet nice and wide. That's good. Squaring off the feet with the short edges of the mat. We'll take the whole of the left foot out, bend the knee to a square, move the inner thighs back, and tailbone drops down. And we'll float up the arms for our warrior pose. Let's give the shoulders a bit of a shrug. Turn the palms face up and circle the shoulders onto the back. Kind of scooping under the left hip. Feel those muscles drawing in internally. That's nice. So we'll take a breath here. And then turning the palms face down, rest your gaze gently. Middle finger, left hand. Observing the breathing, observing the breath. And then inhale, straighten that leg. And we're going to firm the legs, move your middle, extend to the left and descend. Bringing that left hand to the ground, to your leg or onto a book or a block if you prefer. So find somewhere that works for you. Triangle pose. I'm gonna give the top shoulder a little bit of a shrug. Turn the gaze if it works towards the fingertips above you. Think about moving your navel round towards the ceiling. That's good, moving the waist. It's only a small imperceptible movement. Let's get that rotation in the tummy. Lovely, and then to come out, we'll look down, bend the left knee, root the feet to rise, squaring off the feet, and just pause with the hands at the hips, brightening in the chest. That's great. Inner thighs back, tailbone down. Let's take the whole of the right foot out, bend that knee to a square. Good. Take the inner thighs back, scoop under the front hip, and we'll float up the arms. Warrior. So if you're enjoying it, let's turn the palms up and, and circle the shoulders backwards to keep you time if that's helping you. And we'll take a deep breath. And then turning the palms down for the classic form of this Vira Bhadrasana. Rolling the shoulders down. Rest your gaze gently on the fingertips. Strong arms. And then straightening the front leg. We're going down to triangle. So draw in on your belly and then keeping the hips steady. We'll move the upper body to the right. Take a breath and then let the hand drop down to the leg or the ground. Whatever works for you, maybe use a block. Bringing one arm above the other. That's looking good, well done. Maybe if you lift your head slightly there, Isaac, you'll get a bit more out of it. That's better, yeah. Just lengthening the underside of the neck as well. Cool. Looking very good. We'll take another deep breath. And root the feet, inhale to rise, feet to parallel. 
Very nice. So with the feet to parallel, we're going to hinge forward. Strong legs. Maybe you can bring your hands to the ground or onto a block. Let's have the hands and feet all in a row. Bending the elbows, relaxing the head. Give the shoulders a little shimmy. And drop through the soles of the feet, inner thighs. Rooting down through the toes and the heels. See if you can lengthen the crown of your head slightly towards the ground. Good, and then we'll bend the knees, root the feet to rise. Fantastic. And then please step the feet together, come back to mountain pose. So I promised you some quad stretches today. So you can choose to do this at the wall or in the middle of the room, depending on how your balance is today. So when you're ready, please catch hold of the front of the right foot or the trousers, or put a strap around the foot. And we'll bring the knees together, standing tall, lengthen from hip to knee. Good, and, and for this one, we kind of squeeze the heel into the, in towards the hip. So after the first few breaths, there's probably some resistance from those muscle fibers. It should get easier. So breathing into whatever's happening and any sharp pains or if it gets to feel worse just let yourself off a bit too. but as it gets easier you might be able to draw the heel in deeper have the knees together standing straight and take a breath and release both feet to the ground great so we're going to change sides pouring the weight into the other leg catch hold of the front of the foot other foot Bring the knees together, thigh bones parallel. And just use the feedback from your body. So we, as we move through our yoga journey, we develop a rapport with the body. So you'll be able to kind of listen to what it says and respond. Can you draw the heel into your hip, lengthen from hip to knee, thigh bones together. And we did do a vertical version earlier in the week. So you, it might help if you put your hands on the wall or you might be able to freestyle this in the middle of the room, depending on your body type and how balanced you're feeling today. So we'll come back to folding the right leg in and then going to try and tilt the whole body through 90 degrees, kick that right foot back away from you. And what you could do is have the fingertips pointing to the ankle and bend the knee. So we're looking for a horizontal form with the leg behind you making a bit of an O shape with the right arm. Great stuff. Keep that standing leg nice and straight. Keep it steady. So what a lot of people do is cock the leg. So try and keep the knee two knees on parallel tracks. Superb. And we'll release when you're ready. And come to the second side. So straightening and strengthening the standing leg. Catch hold of the front of the foot and we'll tilt forward. Kick the foot back into the hands. Extending forward. Well done. Maybe what we call flip the grip, get the elbow pointing up towards the ceiling. Is that going well? Fingers towards the, the ankle. 
It's looking good. Bend the, the top elbow if you like. Well done, well done. And we'll release and come back to standing tall. Very nice indeed. Back to man, pin pose. Exhale down into the feet. Inhale, bring the arms overhead. Exhale to a forward bend. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhaling, bow. We'll step back to a downward facing dog. Having a nice stretch. Lengthen the sides of the waist. Push the floor away. And we're going to walk the ankles a bit closer together and raise the right leg, please. So lifting that right leg, could you please bend the right knee and lift that right hip up and over the left hip. So we're kind of looking underneath the right arm. Yeah, that's good. Take a breath. Lifting the leg. Now this is cocking the leg, isn't it? So lift the inner thigh up and back. And we'll come back to down dog or to all fours if you want to rest. And then when you're ready, join in again with the left leg to the sky. Bend the left knee, lifting the left hip up and over, opening up the whole thing in whatever version you like. You know, you can always do a version with the back knee down. You know these things. Good. So let's all come to hands and knees. And I'm going to suggest you lower yourself down onto your forearms. All right, so getting the forearms parallel with the sides of the mat. Let's extend both legs behind us. Come to a forearm plank for a moment. Firm those thigh muscles away from the ground. Getting in a nice straight line, top of the head in one direction, heels in the other, and then knees down, elbows close. Let's come onto our tummies. Great, please pick up the right leg and lengthen it. Place it back on the ground. Pick up the left leg and lengthen it. Place it back on the ground. So we're gonna really press the toenails of the big toes into the ground. Good, and then rolling the shoulders down, lift up to what's sometimes called the sphinx, but we need a lot of engagement in those legs as you lengthen the waist up, Broaden the collarbones, widening across the chest. Slip the shoulder blades down towards your waist. Lovely. So from here, can you please bring the left forearm parallel with the top of the mat? And then we're gonna bend the right leg, keeping the knees together. Catch hold of the right foot. Good, so it's very similar to what we were doing standing. So if you've got the capacity, bend the elbow up towards the ceiling. We'll look forward and getting a little bit of a back bend happening with the front body. Kick the foot into the hand. That's nice. So as I was saying at the beginning, you know, before everyone arrived, that um, this stretching off these quads is great for calming us down. It helps to calm down our fight or flight response. It's a, it's a really good thing to do. Can you bring that heel in towards the outer hip now? Now it's loosened off a bit. So really can help to chill us out and lower the levels of our cortisol, our stress hormones. It can be lurking about in the legs, ready for us to run away from a bear. It's nice. So really stretching that out now and relax. Very good. So we'll change hands, get the right forearm. You might want to reset the legs by lengthening them and pressing the toenails into the mat. And then in your own time, please grab the left foot, bringing the heel into the outer hip. So it might take a few moments to relax and release, rolling the shoulders down, breathing into whatever's going on. 
and then bring it a little closer if you can. So the idea is to disempower that fight or flight response. So it's very, sometimes very inappropriate for the modern world because you can't run away from your computer screen if it annoys you or, oh, or gives you gyp. So let's just take it all down now. One more breath, heel to hip and relax. And I'm going to suggest you just make a pillow with the hands. Give the hips a little wiggle and rest your forehead on the hands. We'll just take a couple of breaths, belly breaths into the ground. And you might want to say to yourself, all is well as you exhale, all is well. And then bending both knees, please catch hold of the feet. Good, so if you can't manage the feet, the the trousers will do, or a strap around the ankles. And then I'm going to kick the feet away and use the feet to power the pose. Yeah, so lifting up with the power of the feet. Feet move away and up. Dhanurasana, bow pose. All looking pretty good here, what I can see. Keep breathing. So the arms are just levers, the feet are driving the pose. Take the ears back towards your toes. We'll take a breath and release. Let the feet come out to the side, forehead to the hands. Breathe your belly into the earth. Very well done people, that was awesome. So if it's comfortable for you, we're going to come back up to child's pose, which is taking the spine completely the other way. So let's do this nice and gently. You might want to put a blanket around the backs of the knees, touch the toes together. And a good way to get into it is just to be kind to yourself, is to zigzag the hips from side to side and just incrementally, bit by bit, Lower the hips to the heels, bowing the head. Good, and then we'll come up to seated. If you are comfortable here, come back to where we began with the palms face down on the thigh bones. Coming back to an awareness of your breath. That's lovely. So we can extend the legs and sit on our bottoms. So get yourself comfortable. And what's quite good is just to walk your bottom back an inch or two, moving it from side to side. To, that connection between the sit bones and the earth, coming up onto fingertips, circling the shoulders, lift and brighten in the chest, pushing the heels away. That's good. Observing the breath. Very nice. When you're ready, let's gather up the back of the left knee and place the sole of the left foot on your inner thigh. Good, so get that comfortable so the heel can be as close to you as is comfortable for you. And we'll just use your hands to broaden the thigh flesh out to the side. Hands either side of the straight leg, take a breath. Exhale, bow. So this is a forward bend we often do together. It's very good for grounding. In fact, you can just observe your in a landscape, calming down as you breathe your thigh bones into the ground. Very grounding and calming pose. Lovely, and then inhale to emerge. Well done. So 
we're going to try something different. If it's, I know most of you have seen this one this week. It's the one where you fold the left leg back. So if this isn't for you, for whatever reason, please just stick with this one we've just been doing. It's no obligation. But if it's if you want to have a go and it's not causing you any pain, we'll go right over onto the right elbow, fold the foot back. And that's the way we come out as well. You know what we're saying about the hinge and the twist. So just to avoid any torque. And then just slip a hand underneath your right thigh muscle, bring it out to the side. If you're tilting over to the right, prop yourself up on block. The sole of the left foot should be pointing straight up. Thigh bones together. Push the right heel away. And you're there. So find your version, remembering we're all different. And we'll take a deep breath. Hinge forward and bow. Shrug the shoulders, nose to knee. Very nice. It's not quite as comfortable as the last one if you're, but it's still very valid for calming us down. And then walking the hands back. If you come out, let's go on to your, right over onto the right elbow to unfold the knee safely. And coming back, walk your bum back and bring the sole of the right foot in. Getting in a comfortable place, pushing the heel away, hands either side of the straight leg, finding a good place for you. That's nice. Take a breath and a fold, bowing the head, breathing your way down. That's nice. So as we, something has drawn us to this yogic path. And as we calm ourselves down, we, not only do we serve ourselves, we, we serve those ar around us. Remembering to ground yourself, remembering to calm yourself, remembering as a yoga person, you could make the world a, a better place by just being the one that isn't wound up. All right, so we'll take another breath here and then very calmly and with discernment, decide whether to just stick with this leg position or to rock onto the left elbow and fold the right leg back. So whichever works for you, propping up that left hip and then we'll all just pull that left thigh out to the left a bit. So getting into a good place, ready for our forward bend. Take a breath and a bow. Breathing your way down. Thank you, and then slowly emerging. And just remembering to go right over to the left to unfold the leg, just to protect the knees and we'll give the ankles a little circle. Great stuff. For, for the next one, we're gonna do full Virasana hero pose. So if that wasn't for you, folding the legs back, you can bring the soles of the feet together if you're playing with the full pose, it's the one where we getting our feet as wide as the mat and the knees almost together, but not quite. Just gingerly see if you can sit down between the heels. So there's no need to do it if you've got a knee injury. 
And if you can't get your bottom right to the ground, please use your book or your block to sit on. And while you're gathering up some stuff, you might want to have a blanket underneath your feet just to stop the tops of the feet hurting. And what's quite nice to do is have a, a cushion off the sofa as a, to make a bolster ramp behind you. So, so there's a few things you can do. So getting whatever you need, or you can just go straight. And a few of you will be able to just go back, no problem. So unless you might already be there, but let's get the hips between the heels using whatever you need for your body type. And just if you're just a kind of a smidgen off the ground, please take a little prop to make it more easeful. Thank you. So knees, thigh bones are parallel. So the knees are not quite touching. But the thigh bones are parallel. Soles of the feet are pointing straight up. All right. Sometimes some people like to have a bit of a gap between their body and the heels. And then there's an opportunity to go back if you want to. So this is, again, optional. So we've got a couple of young ones with us today. Anyone want to go back? You're so welcome. I'm including you in this, Susanna. <laughs> Let's come back onto your elbows. Or oh, notice my knees come up. So for me, that's probably enough. I'm going to just think about working the legs back, knees back down. So let's get getting yourself in a good place. If you manage to get your head down onto the cushion or the floor, maybe sweep the skin of the scalp up towards the crown and drop the chin down a bit. Excellent. And then the, lastly, you might wish to bring the arms overhead. So that is advanced. So with or without your propage, coming into your version of this virasana, this hero pose. So knees together, Juliana. That's it, thigh bones parallel. So it's, it's even more, my darling. So you went, oh, I can see, uh, that's it, knees together, perfect. Let's just think about the thigh bones, two parallel lines. That's beautiful. Fantastic team. So this is not the easiest of poses for most people. So we're going to dig the elbows in to come up. Uh-huh. So pushing down on your elbows, coming up and make your way to all fours. And let's just draw some circles with the hips. So moving your hips in a circle one way and then the other. Just to release any tension in the back. And then we'll come to our lying down section. So getting comfortable on your back with the knees up. Shrug the shoulders, getting comfortable. Allow the knees to just fall together. Relax the inner thighs. Very nice. So we're coming to our cool down section, so the final part of our practice. Let's lift up your bottom and take it an inch over to the left side of the mat, and then we'll hug the knees in and drop them over to the right. Spreading out the arms. You can bring that right hand onto the top leg if you like. Shrugging the shoulders and bring the the back of the head to the ground. Breathing deeply. Fantastic. Inhale to center, move your bottom back to the midline and pause. 
Well done. We're going to do the other side. So shift your hips over to the right edge of the mat. Cuddle the knees in and drop them to the left. Resting that left hand on the top thigh, spreading out the arm. Get comfortable on the back of your head. See if you can get both shoulders down on the mat. That's lovely. Well done. So we'll come slowly back. Wiggle your hips to the midline and just pause for a moment in a straight line. Thank you. So I'm going to suggest you gather your right knee into your belly. And just circle it against your body a few times. Bringing the hands behind the right thigh. Straighten the right leg. And can I suggest you push that right leg away from you and get a lovely arch in your back. So the back's moving away from the ground now. Lengthen, strengthen that right leg, pushing the thigh bone gently away from you. Well done. And bring the right ankle to the bottom knee. Letting that right leg fall out to the side in a sort of figure four shape. And you might want to stay here or what you could do is gather up the underneath thigh with both hands. Pushing the thigh bone away from you. Pushing the top leg away from you. And so some people might want to straighten the underneath leg, straighten the left leg, keeping that action of pushing the thigh bone away from you. So finding a version that works for you as we gently cool down towards our relaxing conclusion. That's great. One more breath and then both feet to the ground. And we'll bring the left knee in, circling the left knee a few times. Bring the left ankle to the right knee, letting the left knee fall out to the side. And then you might want to gather up the back of the right leg in your hands. Wonderful. Finding a version that works for you. Maybe straightening the underneath leg. And letting both feet drop to the ground. I'm going to gather up the back of the left leg with both hands. Just push the thigh bone away from you and arch your back. Having a nice stretch there. Well done. When you're ready, please bring both feet to the ground. Walk them a little wider. Allow the knees to fall in, palms facing up. Just make any adjustments. Relax into the ground. That's fantastic. So we'll come to a little bridge. So we'll walk the ankles closer together. Turn the palms to face down. 
Just go ahead and shrug one shoulder in and the other shoulder. And in your own way, lift your hips, grounding down through the heels and the shoulders, moving the knees away. Just feel those thigh muscles stretching away towards the knees. You may wish to interlock the fingers if that's what you normally do. And then you'll take a deep breath in and exhaling, gently relax. Good. So we're nearly there. Please bring the soles of the feet to meet each other. Relaxing the thigh bones out to the side. Turning the palms to face up. We'll just pause for a moment and may I just check that you're warm enough. Do you need a, a jumper or some socks or a blanket or anything? If so, let's gather all that stuff around us. Because the next pose would be to extend the legs and let the feet flop out to the side for Shavasana. And there's something about our relaxation, even though it's it's kind of short, you can get a little bit cold, so so the body systems slow down, the body can get cold. So let's get get cozy and then come to your shavasana. Have the arms a little way away from the body, shrug the shoulders, give the legs a little shake and then let the feet flop out to the sides. And then let's consciously relax the hands. Relaxing the hands completely. Fingers gently curl. The thumb relaxes in an attitude of complete surrender. We're letting go into what is. Shoulders release into the ground. That's nice. Back of the head relaxes into the ground. Allow your hips to be heavy. Legs to be heavy. Releasing your whole body weight into the earth. Feeling yourself held by the earth below. Just let go into the earth's embrace. That's lovely. Consider your out breath. Breathing yourself down into a really relaxing place. Well done. We're going to think about coming back now. We've still got plenty of time though. So coming back very gently and slowly, just draw in a deeper breath. 
And let's start by just moving the fingers, maybe twirling the wrist. You might want to wiggle the toes. And what's quite nice to bring the arms up and over, having a lovely stretch, lying down, full body stretch from the fingertips to the toes, enjoying this body we're gifted with. We'll take a breath and then roll onto the right side. Rolling over onto the right side. Getting yourself comfortable on the right side. And we'll press ourselves up to seated. Relaxing the shoulders down. Coming to a comfortable seat. Using the left hand to press yourself up to seated. And let's have this one where the left palm is up, cupped in the right hand. And just taking three mindful breaths. Just being fully aware of the sensation of breathing. Three breaths with all your awareness in each breath. That's good. And we'll take another breath. And turning the palms to face down. Please bring the hands together next for our conclusion and our namaste, honouring the divine in each one of us. Thank you so much for your time and energy today. Wishing you all the very best and hope to see some of you either tomorrow morning or Sunday evening coming up. So we've got lots of classes, most days we've got a class, so always welcome to see you. I'll hopefully send out another email. In a day or two. So until then, namaste.